Surely you've seen this demo. They tell you that space-time is like a fabric, and a star is like this bowling ball here. And while it's certainly a provocative and compelling analogy, try not to take it too seriously. Otherwise, you risk being wrong and confident about it. The demonstration is useful in basically only two ways. It demonstrates that if an object is moving through a curved space, it will naturally follow curved paths rather than straight lines. And it suggests that heavy things do the curving. But that's basically it. And even for these aspects, it misses key features that can lead to wrong intuitions. First, and I shouldn't need to say this, the sheet is two-dimensional, whereas our universe has three dimensions of space. You can't fold it so much for this, though, it's hard to make a three-dimensional block of fabric. But more problematic is that it relies on a two-dimensional depiction, because unlike Einstein's general relativity, the source of the curvature is a downward pull of real gravity in this demo, suggesting that gravity causes the curvature. But of course, that's backwards. In Einstein's relativity, the curvature causes gravity, or perhaps more accurately, the curvature is gravity. On top of that, the space-time fabric demo can be particularly confusing, because it implies that our three-dimensional space is curving into a fourth dimension. But that's just not the case. In the formalism described by general relativity, you don't need a fourth spatial dimension in order for the three dimensions of our universe to be curved. The notion of curvature in our universe is intrinsic. It doesn't require something else to curve into. It's a tricky concept to grasp, so I recommend thinking of curvature not as a thing bending, but rather as a change in the way distances and durations are measured. It turns out that if those are different in different places, that's what's meant by curvature in general relativity. And of course, the most important missing part of the whole demo is that gravity is as much about time curving into space and vice versa as it is about space curving into itself. In fact, in low gravity environments, like the surface of the Earth, the largest contribution to the gravitational force we experience is time curving into space. As a result of this curvature, if you start out moving purely through time and not at all through space, you inevitably end up moving through space. In fact, that's called falling. Unfortunately, it's hard to do much better than the old ball and fabric demonstration, so it'll persist. But try not to take it too seriously, or you'll end up ignoring the true strangeness of general relativity.